Welcome to the Special Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, Wednesday, March 22nd. And I will call the meeting to order and have a roll call starting on the left. June Gagney. John Meyer. Carla Destardens. Mary Ann Chinati. Who will be me, no recording secretary. All right, so we do have a quorum. There are no alternates to um, appoint for membership. So we go right into the public hearings. Um, item A has been withdrawn per a letter from the town. So that is withdrawn. So moving on to item B, 23-1TA of TNS Oil, proposing a text amendment zoning district, 9.41 special permit uses in the I-1 industrial district and section 12 special permits. Do we have someone to speak for the applicant? That's me. Come on up. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Okay. What we'd like to do is... Could you uh, just state who you are first? I'm um, Phil Petro, owner of TNS Oil Company, Angle 12 Vault. Um, what we're proposing is to put in conjunction with hometown heating two 30,000 gallon foam bay tanks up at my storage facility at 388 Norwich Road in Mutor. <clears throat> it's going to be designed by the same person that uh, did the original boat plant, uh, web engineering, Bob Gugio, and uh, we would present all those site drawings and everything if the text amendment is approved because of the fact that uh, we were initially approved for uh, propane, but I guess the regulation changed in what, 2003 or whatever? I don't right? recall when it was, but yeah. it was changed. So we're just looking for an amendment. We've been running this business for 23 years with absolutely no issues, and there would be no issues if we would conform, we can conform to all the regulations that Ryan uh, proposed. So that's, that's my say. Okay, thank you. And just for public information, um, the applicant's requesting a text amendment to add bulk propane storage and distribution to the commercial zoning district with certain restrictions. For commercial zones, there would be a seven acre minimum lot size with a 300 foot setback from the road for tank locations. Side and rear yard setbacks for the tanks would be 100 feet. For the industrial one zone, all setbacks for the tanks would be 100 feet with no minimum lot size. For the industrial one zone, this is currently permitted without any restrictions. It is listed as gas dealers and the above ground storage of bottled gas subject to Connecticut Department of Environmental Protection, fire marshal approvals, and compliance with, with NFPA 58. Um, this is a public hearing, so if there's anyone who has a comment or question about this text amendment, um, you can feel free to step up to the microphone. Were there any comments from staff regarding the text amendment? I would just like to read through the text so that sure. can hear. All right, so under <coughs> section 8.21, special permit uses in the commercial zoning districts, adding section K, bulk storage of propane and distribution facilities. Uh, under 9.41, special permit uses in the industrial one district, bulk storage of propane distribution and distribution facilities. The reason why we're proposing that is we're deleting the, looking to delete the existing text uh, that differs from the new text that was proposed. It's just, uh, they called it something different. The original said gas dealers and above ground storage of bottled gas. And so we're just changing it to bulk storage of propane and distribution facility. Uh, section 12, special permits. This is where we get into the actual regulations. 12.48, adding bulk storage of propane and distribution facility. Propane sales, bulk storage of propane and distribution, along with accessory uses, such as sales of propane equipment, parts, and appliances, may be permitted by special permit in the commercial zoning districts and the industrial one zoning district, if the commission determines that the use will not adversely affect the surrounding area. This does not pertain to 20-pound tank exchange stations or propane tank refilling stations where bulk storage does not exceed 2,000 gallons. In addition to any requirements established by the Connecticut General Statute, such propane sales and distribution facility shall be subject to the following. A minimum of seven acres is required in the commercial zoning districts. There is no minimum lot size in the industrial one zoning district. Description and purpose of propane use, including hours of operation, shall be submitted with a special permit application and associated site plan. 
The site plan shall meet the requirements of Section 19, Site Development Plan, and the following. Shall measures be taken to provide buffer areas and other proposed screening measures from propane and storage tank areas. Buffer and screening, Section 8.12, shall apply to facilities proposed in the commercial districts, which that's what we already have for, for screening. Uh, section 9.5 shall apply to facilities proposed in the industrial one district. And again, that's already what we have for screening in the industrial zone. Um, exterior propane tank storage shall be fully fenced. All exterior propane tank storage shall, be, shall maintain a minimum 100 foot distance from park property boundaries, except that in commercial zoning districts, said storage shall be located a minimum of 300 feet from the road. Location of exterior propane tank storage shall be subject to review and approval by the fire marshal and fire chief. That is the full proposal of text. Any comments or questions from members of the public? Comments or questions from staff? And comments or questions from board members? Okay. Hearing and seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make that motion. Second. A motion by June to close the public hearing and second by John. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Public hearing is closed. Moving on to item C. 23-2TA, Plainfield Planning and Zoning Commission, proposing a text amendment to section 12.30.1, special permit uses for historic preservation through use conversions. Ryan, would you give the summary of that, please? Sure. So currently we are, we allow uh, use conversions to preserve historic structures such as mills and any, any structure that's on the historic registry. And one of the uses that's allowed to preserve these structures is multifamily housing. With our previous uh, application for a text amendment that pertained to multifamily housing, the commission um, had a concern that if we got a large development uh, that put, say, 300 units in town, um, adding 300 units can dilute our affordable housing stock. So. Per Connecticut statutes, if your if your affordable housing stock drops below 10% of your overall housing, you are now open to 830G requirements, which is a development that can come in and bypass all zoning all zoning regulations. Um, so the commission thought it'd be a good idea to require um, up to 10% of the units be dedicated to affordable housing. So after we approved that, I thought, well also do the same thing with uh, with historic structures any of the mills can be converted to housing so we're just basically adding that same language that um, you know up to 10 percent of the uh, units can be dedicated as affordable the commission can require it to be dedicated as affordable and that is for any development over um, 10 units 10 or more yeah 10, 10 or more units as they update 10% as affordable housing. This is a public hearing, so if there's anyone with a comment or question on this application, this is your opportunity. Any additional comments or questions from staff? Any additional comments or questions from board members? Okay. This is pretty much already in there. This is just adding the, the affordable housing to stock. The use was already allowed. Yeah, we're just adding 10% affordable housing. All right, any other questions? Okay, hearing and seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make that motion. A motion by June. Motion. Second by John. All in favor of closing the public hearing, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, public hearing is closed. Moving on to item D, 23-3TA of the Town of Plainfield Planning and Zoning Commission proposing a 12-month moratorium on cannabis covering all uses as stated in Public Act Number 21-1, Senate Bill Number 1201, an act concerning responsible and equitable regulation of adult use cannabis. Uh, Ryan, would you just review for me? Yes. So Thank you. We are currently under a six-month moratorium for anything cannabis related as the commission has been in the process of developing regulations. Uh, we have not yet concluded that process and we have to either extend the moratorium 
or once the moratorium expires, which is in April, um, the town will be open to any application that somebody submits, um, regardless of what it is. Uh, the way it works is if you do not have regulations in place and you do not have a moratorium, anybody that applies for cannabis, regardless of the use, it gets regulated the same as any other use. So if it's an outdoor grow operation, uh, it's regulated the same as any agricultural operation, uh, just like a cornfield, um, so you can't put any restrictions on it. Same thing with indoor grow operations. It's a uh, essentially um, <coughs> hydroponic cultivation, which we already allow. So there'll be nothing for permitting on that. Um, any retail sales would be just like uh, a pharmacy or a convenience store. So what the application is is to extend the moratorium for one year. Um, the commission will continue developing regulations. At such point in time, they approve new regulations, the moratorium will be lifted. Okay. This is a public hearing. If there's anyone with a comment or question on this application, please step up. Step up to the microphone. Just state your name and your comment or question. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, my name is Ron Lyman. Uh, and uh, uh, I first of all want to thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, and then tell you that uh, uh, I do appreciate, first of all, the high paid uh, positions that you all have here, donating your time. And thank God there's people like you that are willing to do this. So thank you for that. Um, I also want to tell you that uh, I bought the, uh, uh, I am a taxpayer in the town. I did buy what was the uh, former uh, uh, Central Ford. Uh, uh, of course, they were there and for many years, and then uh, the business was sold and they leased and then they moved out to Lake Road and the property sort of went downhill from there. Uh, I bought the property and have done environmental cleanup and a lot of other things too, which I don't, it's not about, I know this is a public hearing about something different, so I don't want to go off on to a tangent about my property. But the, the, the bottom line is I've been trying to sort out because, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, I would like to have the highest and best use. Uh, created and uh, have it be a very vibrant spot with uh, a great tax base for the town. And uh, because uh, even though it was a retail location, it's not really a, an A retail location. Uh, ideally, it's probably uh, you know going to be improving the existing uh, former uh, metal buildings to make them nice and functional and so on. I've subdivided the property, etc. But uh, um, what I seem to have found is a company that uh, seems to be a really good fit, and they're a, a multi-state company, um, and uh, uh, a very strong company, and so on. Now, I, I know this is not specific to my property, once again, so I, I appreciate you indulging me. But in general, whether it's my property or someone else, if this particular company, just to let you know, has a license, and they have to be operational uh, effectively at the end of the year, which I know is, Pretty challenging. I mean, obviously, that doesn't mean they're going to start with a raw piece of land and get a building and improve the building, but it means that they have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, do a lot of improvements to customize it and so on. Um, the difference between this kind of particular operation, for whatever it's worth, I know a lot of communities are concerned about retailing and their children, and, and there's so many other social issues with uh, growing, retailing, and all that. This particular company uh, does not do any of that, they manufacture. And they have very, they have more than one type of operation. Everything from infused drinks to uh, gummies to that type of thing. And uh, they actually want more than one building. It seems to be a good fit on my property. But the, the point is, you won't see, although you might see retail in each town, and a lot of things, multiple towns will say, oh well, look we'll at the next guy or whatever. Uh, I, I'm sure I don't think you'll have multiple manufacturers in every town, if you will. And it's it's jobs. You know, and it seems like it might be a really good use of buildings that, uh, you know, you have to um, try to figure out how to repurpose in a way the town can be proud, and I can be proud. And so all I'm really encouraging you to do is to, uh, whatever, it may be parts of it you can decide early and, 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 and release it. But whatever you can do to, there are some time constraints for some of the opportunities that if this town doesn't end up with, the other towns will. Um, and, and I don't mean that, uh, or another retail spot, because I, I imagine these companies, there's always somebody who would like to put a retail spot everywhere. But I'm talking about things uh, of the nature I mentioned, because 
not every town is certainly going to have a manufacturer. So I would just, uh, first of all, thank you for the time and everything that you folks do. And, and I know you're putting your heart in this and want to do what's best for the town. Uh, I just want to encourage you, though, to hopefully not miss opportunities that are time, that they're time restricted by the state of Connecticut, by the way. That's the way the licenses are. So I'm, I'm hopeful. I told them that although uh, that I know you have a more term for a certain time, you're extending it even longer than probably you think you need, uh, because of the fact you want to make sure that you have plenty of time that you're hopeful to do it sooner rather than later. And by God willing, you'll be able to, because I, um, I'm hopeful to put together, a, you know, to have a, a tenant life, but I'll have an opportunity to put uh, someone like this in our town. So, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Good night. Any other comments from the public on this application? Sean Peterson, I just got a question. How far along are you with creating these guidelines? Sure. So as a member of the subcommittee, I can speak to that. Um, so staff did draft um, prohibition language as well as regulation um, language. Um, the subcommittee felt that it was too new to rush, and that's why the moratorium is being requested at this point. As Brian mentioned in his summary, if we do nothing, someone could come forward and they'd be outside those that are required by the state of Connecticut licensing. So the options before the subcommittee is to do nothing and just let it come in as is, to develop um, specific regulations for the retail manufacturing and growth production, or to have a prohibition. The subcommittee felt they didn't have sufficient information to move forward with any of those three decisions, which is what prompted the extension of the moratorium to allow more time to determine which course of action the committee wanted to pursue. So my, my other question to follow up that is, what part of the process are you with trying to get comfortable with either the regulations that are currently drafted, or is it just kind of like we're sitting and waiting? So staff, has, anyone, staff has been doing surveying of other towns and what they're doing, what regulations are being proposed in other towns, what businesses are being started in other towns, so that we have more data to go on. Because okay. it's so new, there's not a lot of information to go on. So you know, we've so, sat on it twice, I think, correct? Excuse me? We've sat on it twice now, haven't we? There was a six-month uh, moratorium. Wasn't there one before when the state first introduced it? When we were first coming out with the regulations, we kind of like held off. And then there was no moratorium. Yeah, just the moratorium was this. I think because the state hadn't finalized their process, there was we were holding off the nothing. State hadn't process. Correct. The, and we now were waiting on the state. The moratorium in place, so we really should be moving forward and trying to figure out what we're going to do. Correct. Basically, yep. do it or don't. Do it. Correct. It sooner than later. So the subcommittee will reconvene in three months to review the additional data that's coming. Thank you. And there would be another public hearing at that time when the subcommittee makes their proposal to the public. Uh, Dean Gormer, point of clarification. You're currently uh, coming to the expiration of a six-month moratorium and you're proposing a 12-month. Does that mean you're proposing a new 12-month moratorium or extending the first one from six to 12? No, no it's a 12-month moratorium, so it would be effective April 1st when the six-month expires, <laughs> and then so. it would go to April 1st but it could be ended earlier if we come forward with regulations. Okay, yeah. so to this gentleman's point, if you go the full year from this, from the beginning of April, then everything that has to be done by the end of the year is a moot point, it's no longer applicable. And can't, and can't so no applications could be accepted until okay. the moratorium is over, correct. But, when, but do you that, plan, when do you plan to review this again? You said in three months? Correct. All right, so this give, that gives this gentleman some time to respond if, if there, an opportunity becomes available. Yep, the subcommittee will reconvene with the information gathered by staff. Any other comments or questions from the public? Staff? Just to clarify, uh, when the subcommittee reconvenes, it will reconvene in May. That's when the three months is up. And then when the subcommittee decides on how they want to propose addressing this issue, then it would present that to the full commission, and then the commission would schedule a public hearing. Thank you. Any other comments, questions from public, or staff, or board members? Okay. Hearing and seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second. Motion by John to close, second by June. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
public hearing is closed. Moving on to item E. 23 4SP of Passage Development LLC requesting a special permit for construction of a 2,300 square foot barn on property located at 192 Pond Hill Road, uh, Pond Hill Road, excuse me, Assessor's Map 29, Block 122, Lot 63B, RA60 Zoning District. Speaking for the applicant. Good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Paul Bulger of Essence Land today with the City Circle Associates. Um, representing the applicant, um, and Mr. Passe is also present for our questions. For us. Uh, the proposal uh, before you is, is for the construction of a uh, 300 square foot accessory building uh, it's located on a residential lot um, in the RA60 zone. It's off of Pond Hill Road. It's a six acre rear lot. Uh, it's about, I would say, about 1,200 feet back from the road to the lot. Um, and the proposed barn is to be located to the rear of the lot. Uh, it's probably going to be about, I think it was 54 feet or so off the back boundary line. Uh, so it is within the zone setback area. Um, the, uh, I guess your regulations require anything over 900 square feet that has special permits. It's basically going to be used for storage of um, this equipment and toys, I guess we call them. Um, and it's, it's located in an area where there's, there's no adjacent houses to that rear boundary line, uh, about 100 acre of woodland back behind it. Um, so it shouldn't have a big intrusion on any of the public properties in that respect. We've been before the Inland Wetlands Commission and they approved the location. Um, he's proposing to put a bathroom in so there will be a water service and a uh, sewer service that will connect from the existing house, which is currently under construction, um, to the front part of the lot. Um, I'm not sure what other information you might need at this point. Uh, were there any staff comments on the application? Uh, I have no issues with the, uh, with the location or the size. It's out in the middle of nowhere. It's not going really to bother anybody. Um, I'm sure it's going to be an attractive building. Say. So I have no issues. Now you had a suggested condition of approval? Yes. Uh, would you like to talk about that now or wait for the deliberation? Well, should it be suggested for public hearing just so they're aware? We can do that. Um, so so it won't be discussed, just. Yeah. So the suggested condition of approval is that the barn is to be utilized for residential storage associated with the house or for agricultural purposes. Just so that in the future nobody buys it, thinking they can convert it to a commercial use. Okay. Now this is a public hearing, so if there's anyone in the audience with a comment or a question on this application, this is your opportunity. Okay. Any other comments or questions from staff? Any comments or questions from board members? And he's going to explain chair signature lines. Which part are you looking at? Motion to close the public hearing. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Motion by June to close. Second by John. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Public hearing is closed. Moving on to the regular meeting. So I call the regular meeting to order. Um, citizen participation. This is opportunity for the public to address the committee on an issue that is not one of the public hearings that has already closed. Okay. Seeing none. Moving on to the unfinished old business. Item A has been withdrawn. So moving on to item B, 23, 3SP of Town Plainfield, requesting special permit for, um, that was also withdrawn, excuse me. 
Um, item C, 23, uh, 1TA of TNS Oil proposing a text amendment to section 8.21 special permit uses, commercial zoning district, 9.41 special permit uses in the I-1 industrial district, and section 12 special permits. Was there any items for discussion among board members regarding this text amendment application?
1SA of Pass A Development, LLC, requesting four lot subdivision on 133 Snake Meadow Road, Assessor's Map 29, Block 122, Lot 2, RA60 Zoning District. Do we have someone to speak for the applicant? Question. 
The um, house, the existing house that's currently occupied? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any comments or questions okay. from board members? This is a site plan, so this is not a public plan. I mean, I'm sorry, four lots of them. It's a question of the grading on the two houses uh, the south. Um, that's what? 20 foot? Yeah. Foot? Well, it's, it's in, in this area here, you've got some, but it's, uh, it's you know, it's, what happens is you've got a little flat spot and you've got some really steep areas. Uh, and then you've got another, another little flat spot and some steep areas here. So what we, we're just creating a building uh, path, something reasonable so that we don't have a big steep driveway and a house kind of set up on this really steep lot. Uh, so uh, grading it out to make a reasonable slope in the lot. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, it's, it's decent material out here. Um, uh, the, the test bits in, indicate that it's, uh, they're all stands and gravels out here. So uh, we're not really concerned about bleed out on the slopes and things of that nature that could potentially cause some problems for the whole person. What's the grade uh, next to that northern house there? Uh, no, I mean, uh, uh, in the southern, the, the second house from the south, that grade just to the north. Yes, yeah. this, this right here? Yeah. That's a two to one slope. Okay. Uh, and we are, we are showing uh, uh, control fabric on that to stabilize it. So um, uh, as that is excavated out in order to put a moment seal over the top of it, uh, we're, we're calling for a, uh, a biodegradable netting uh, to go on. So um, once the, uh, the uh, vegetation is established there over time, that will, uh, that will biodegrade and you won't have this, you know, these plastics and things you know, kind of sticking out of the ground that are associated with the permanent uh, erosion control fabrics. And you said that that's sand and gravel in that company? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty, it's fairly good material. Yeah. Is it, um, is it going to be, um, that's where I want to it open up moisture to allow it to go the vegetation? Uh, uh, if, as long as we put the, if we put the six inches of topsoil on it, yes. Mm -hmm. um, like right now, uh, these, you know, the, the site is, is well vegetated now. Sure. So, okay. so it's a matter of, uh, make sure that you put back the subsoil and topsoil on top of it to uh, be able to um, provide a medium for the grass to grow. And as far as the runoff, um, you said you had level spreads. Where is it? Is it going to ultimately discharge? Uh, ultimately, it will discharge toward the road uh, as, as it does currently. Uh, but in, in, what we're doing, there, there is a defined like gutter line along the, along the edge of the road. So what we didn't want to happen was the water just to come rushing down the driveway especially during the winter months or during the spring thaw. Um, obviously that would create uh, icing conditions. So uh, we've got uh, we've got a riprap swale on the side of the driveway, a 55-foot uh, wide grass level spreader, and we'll get some infiltration in that, and then, and then it'll, it'll uh, uh, trickle over the lower edge of that, um, make its way to the gutter and, and down the edge of the roadway. So it'll go down the roadway. Is there a drainage line in there or anything? Yeah, well, this one, this one here does. We do have a, we, we do have a catch basin with a, um, uh, with a cross culvert that goes across the road. Um, but uh, further down the road, I'll be honest with you, I'm not. I don't know how far it actually drains off down the road before it flows off the road. But uh, there is a pretty well defined uh, gutter line along that road. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments or questions from staff regarding the site plan? I had two suggested conditions of approval. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I did bring it before the Conservation Commission at their meeting Monday night, and they did recommend that the commission uh, request 10 percent of the annual lot. Yep. Which has been calculated out to the 2,000 per lot. Does the open space have to be a separate motion from the application? Or can, can it be included? Condition. It can be included. OK. All right, so the suggested conditions of approval. A note must be added to sheet three for the following. Approval of the plan does not guarantee quantity or quality of water resources. The zoning officer cannot issue a zoning permit until the well has been drilled. Um, second bullet, a note is to be added to the mylars that the $2,000 open space fee shall be applied to each of the three undeveloped lots and paid to the town upon transfer of the property. If there's no other items for discussion, I'll entertain a motion from the board with those suggested conditions of approval.
suggested uh, conditions of approval. All right. We have a motion with those conditions as read. Second. All right. So a motion to approve by June with conditions. Second by John. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Application is approved with those conditions. Moving on to item G, 23-4SP of Passe Development LLC requesting a special permit for construction of a 2,300 square foot barn on property located at 192 Pond Hill Road, Assessor's Map 29, Block 122, Lot 63B, RA 60 Zoning District. Any items for discussion from board members? Any opposed? 
nominations are closed. So moving forward with the motion to appoint Lindsay Jocelyn as the full member and Kathy Messner May Paris as the alternate member. Do I have a motion on that? I'll make that motion. Uh, I have a motion by June to appoint Lindsay Jocelyn to the full member seat and Kathy Mestermaker Harris to the alternate seat. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent. So those members will be notified. Um, it will be filed with the town clerk's office and then they will be um, asked to come get sworn in and they will be present at our next meeting in April. So thank you very much. Moving on to item five, reviewing and acting on the minutes of the February 14th meeting. Were there any items, modifications, changes to the meeting minutes? I did not see any. So I had no changes in my minutes. I didn't see anything for a second. All right, so I will entertain a motion to accept the minutes as presented. And I will second it. All right, motion by John and a second by June to accept the minutes as presented. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are accepted. Moving on to correspondence. No correspondence. Oh, Brian has one. Okay. Okay, so no correspondence to present this evening. We can table it to the end and we'll come back to it. Um, so I'll just entertain a motion to table correspondence to the end of the agenda. Oh, I'll make, oh. Go ahead. I'll make that a motion. I'll second it. All right, motion by June and second by John. We will move that to the end of the agenda. Uh, report from zoning enforcement. Okay, 14 Canterbury Road, uh, junk vehicles and equipment on the property. Uh, this was a cease and desist, and they were making good progress, and then it kind of stalled out. So they were sent a letter uh, that they have to be in compliance by May 1st, otherwise we'll proceed with court action. 3244 North Road, this is the old Jewish City Savings, uh, non compliance with the site plan, and other violations. This is still before the court system. 13 Simmons Ave, their motor vehicle junkyard. Uh, this is also before the court. 12 Rocks Road Extension, um, their junkyard. And as previously stated, they did do a lot of cleanup. There are still some items to be removed. It's bank owned property, so we're hoping get that wrapped up pretty soon so they can put the house on the market. 256 Spalding Road, is dwelling plus commercial tractor trailer boxes and job site trailer. This is before the court. 552 Squaw Rock Road for junkyard. Um, this is also before the court. Zero Community Ave Extension. Uh, mulch operation for non-compliance with site plan pertaining to the on that. I don't expect anything before springtime. 104 High Street for a junkyard. Uh, property owner did stop in a week or two ago and uh, they are planning on cleaning up the property as soon as the ground hardens. 201 Pickett Road, sheds in a setback and dump trucks on the property. Uh, cease and desist was sent out. They were given 30 days to comply. They signed for that on March 10th. So mid-April, they'll have to comply. Nine Lake Street, trailer possibly as a dwelling. Um, letter was sent out to them, warning letter for them to contact me. They did so yesterday, but I have not had time to return the call. And 286 Black Hill Road, um, this was a complaint that came in about a driveway that was widened and uh, storage of a tractor trailer on the property. Uh, I did send out a letter and the individual stated that yes, he does have a tractor trailer. I explained that was not allowed. 
uh, in a residential zone. So he is looking to put the house on the market to find a new property. So we'll put that one on hold for a bit and see what happens. That's it. Okay. A report from planning and development. In addition to my written report, I just wanted to let members know that uh, the Connecticut Water Company is doing a couple of line replacement projects here in town uh, between April and probably September or so. Uh, one up on Blueberry Lane, uh, Patty Lane, Route 12 uh, section of town, and uh, the other one down here at the Gallup area, which is Babcock, Payson Center, Church, Mill, Buchanan, and uh, Community Avenue. This, the playing field, the Gallup Hill, the Gallup portion, they're going to be starting the anticipated sometime around April 10th, and they hope to be done uh, in September. Um, we don't have yet the start date for, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the Blueberry Lane project, but they're also hoping to start that in, in April as well. We did have site meetings uh, with them on both of these projects yesterday. Uh, the zoning enforcement officer and first selectman, myself, and the um, fire chiefs of the respective areas, and uh, Ron Baruby uh, were in attendance. And also, um, Quinnebog River Trail, the Killingly to Route 205 portion. Killingly had applied for, in 2019, a grant to do that portion of the trail. They did not get approved for the funding. Uh, since, however, uh, the federal government has um, been generous with funding DOT, um, the Connecticut uh, DOT has reviewed those 2019 applications again to see if they would approve any of them. And this particular application did indeed get approved. It's a $6.9 million grant um, there are outstanding, well, I items that need to be hammered out, one of which is a portion of the trail is proposed to go through DEP property, which is um, a, value, a valued wildlife corridor for them. So they're not in favor of the, the current um, delineation. So that's got to be worked out as well. The majority of that trail is located in the town of Plainfield, and a small portion is in, in the Killingly side. Um, so that would need to be worked out and agreed upon with the town as well. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to correspondence, or back to correspondence, I should say. Okay. We have a letter from Rawson. Um, this is in regards to the special permit for earth excavation on Jackson Road, and it is simply the increased bond amount, and that was addressed to you. Okay. So we received that, so they are all set for the bond. All right. And the second is a notice from the town of Brooklyn, a public hearing to be held on March 1st, which is already passed, and revisions uh, concerning the setbacks um, to multiple sections of the regulations. One more thing. I did put on the table tonight for members an updated uh, pending legislation uh, with a synopsis of what each of the bills is. This is updated to last week. I have not had the opportunity to update it as of this week, so I don't. This is last week's information. Okay. Thank you. All right. And I believe that is everything. So hearing and seeing no other business for this evening, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Don and a second by June. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much for attending, everybody. Have a good evening.